so dear all in the class we had started the discussion about finding the domain and and a range of a range of real functions okay so this is what we had started talking about domain and a range of real functions so in the class we had taken up the domain and the range of rational functions to begin with under rational functions we covered polynomials under polynomials we had covered the domain and the range by the way when i say domain and the range i hope this is clear that i am talking about the exhaustive domain okay and the range resulting out of that exhaustive domain exhaustive domain means there is no curtailment there is no restriction to the input that you know somebody is putting on the function okay so what is the exhaustive set of inputs that we can feed to the function is what we are calling as the exhaustive domain okay so uh, continuing with the uh, polynomials we covered constant functions we covered uh, linear functions quadratic cubic biquadratic so this was under our polynomials discussion then we started with the rational functions of the type 1 by linear if you remember we did 1 by ax plus b and there we also found out the domain and the range we also discussed uh, linear by linear right somebody please confirm linear by linear ax plus b upon cx plus d you may use chat box also to communicate you can unmute yourself also and communicate right anirudh am i audible yes so we can hear you so you muted your song oh yeah sorry is this fine any uh, yeah so we basically uh, discussed linear by linear also correct after that we started talking about the wavy curve sign scheme and some of you had some questions related to that uh, so why don't we do one thing we'll start our today's class by solving few more questions on the wavy curve sign scheme what do you think will that be a good idea okay so let me just pick up some questions which uh, was given to you on your assignment then when are we doing the one sorry sir will we do the one by quadratic also today today we'll do that yes don't worry about it okay so we'll take one of these questions uh, maybe we can uh, pick up this question the one which looks the slightly ugly part this one yeah let's take this one so let me upload the question here not this one this one yeah yeah so this question is basically for what values of x do you think this inequality will be satisfied okay those who have already solved this question it would be a quick check of your answer those who haven't please listen to me very very carefully because as i told you wavy curve sign scheme is going to play a very very vital role in your future concepts also like we'll be talking about the wavy curve sign scheme for finding the range or finding the interval where the function is increasing decreasing that is the concept of class 12th so your seniors are doing that presently hence it is very important that you know this idea very well in class 11th itself okay so what do you do in this case we first make a number line step number 1 make a number line okay and on this number line please do not show a zero till it is needed this is what i discussed with you step number 1 make a number line and do not show a zero till it is needed okay so what are we going to show on this number line we are going to show the zeros of each of these factors okay the factors which i am circling on your screen with yellow so zeros of each of these factors i am going to show on this number line so what is the zero of x minus 1 to the power 4 1 isn't it so we'll show a 1 maybe let's start with one position here what is the zero of the next one x minus 2 to the power 12 2 What is the zero of x minus three to the power seventeen? Three, right? So that number which makes that particular factor zero, 
that is basically what is called the zero of that factor and that is plotted that is shown on that this on the number line what about x minus 5 to the power 2012 5 yes so 5 will be the zero of that particular factor now after having put these numbers on this number line what do these numbers do these numbers divide the number line into intervals right so you can see 1 2 3 4 5 intervals have been created because of these four numbers right so what i will do is i'll first start with the rightmost interval the one which i am showing right now with a yellow tick okay so that is my rightmost interval correct so what i am going to do i am now going to figure out what will be the sign of this rational function this rational function this rational function the one which i am showing with a blue box right so what is the sign of this rational function in that interval right so if let's say i call this whole thing as let's say y i want to see the sign of y in this interval are you able to find out what i'm trying to say so basically yes, you are looking for the sign of the rational function in all the intervals created by these four numbers so what we do is we do a sample check we take any number which is greater than 5 any number you can take okay up to your convenience let's say i take a 6 If I put a six here, I get six minus one to the power four, six minus two to the power twelve, six minus three to the power seventeen, six minus five to the power two thousand twelve. But you don't have to calculate these values because you will unnecessarily waste time. What I see is each one of them are positive, 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 positive. So overall, this entire expression will be what positive only. Yes or no? But in the class some of you were asking this question sir does it always remain positive on the rightmost interval need not be in some cases you may also get a negative value right so it's always advisable that you check by putting a sample value which is lying in this interval okay and it could be any value even if you put 7 or a 8 or a 100 or a 5000 or a 1 million the result is still going to be the same okay Oh, Samrith is already ready with the answer. Okay, Samrith, just hold on. Okay, you may have got this. So, right. So, let me write down the sign here. So, this sign is a plus. Okay. Now, move to the next interval, which is to the left of it. Okay. You start moving to the left interval. So, while moving to the left interval, you cross this number five. Right. This number comes from this factor. Correct. and this factor is subjected to a power which is an even number so 2012 is an even number so what did i tell you i told i told you a simple uh, rule to follow the rule is if the power is even then retain the sign if the power is odd switch the sign correct so here it is even so you will retain the sign so this will also remain positive correct any questions next now you are crossing 3 so 3 comes from this factor this factor has a power of 17 17 is an odd number so if it is odd you will switch the sign so if you switch plus it will become minus that means reverse the sign switch the sign means reverse the sign okay next the number you are crossing now is 2 2 comes from this factor again this factor has got power of 12 12 is even so again retain the sign so even means retain the sign correct the next one one comes from x minus 1 to the power 4 factor right so one is a zero of that particular factor and 4 is an even number so we will again retain the sign so this will be negative is that fine any question all right now let us answer this question where is this particular expression greater than equal to 0 now see look at the question the question is demanding you where it is greater than equal to 0 yes or no so wherever you have written positive sign that interval you have to state okay so your positive sign is in the interval 3 to 5 and 5 to infinity okay immediately put a union sign in between now will i include 3 no not because 3 is in the denominator even if it was in the numerator i would not have included it because here i am talking about a pure inequality 
okay so in pure inequality you have to not include any of these numbers so you have to start putting round brackets about everything okay so your x should belong to this interval for your expression on the left hand side to be always greater than zero so this is your answer to the question is it so fine? I have a question yes so can we just write x belongs to three comma infinity but if you write three comma infinity you have included five also there right oh yes so you have to remove the five so either you write like this or alternately you can also write x belongs to 3 to infinity excluding a singleton set 5. This is also acceptable. Both are acceptable answers. Okay. Excuse me, sir. So, uh, hi, Arjun. Good evening. So what we, did, what we were doing was we were just quickly recapping the wavy curve sign scheme. I have not started teaching anything new. So I just talked about wavy curve sign scheme, which we had ended our last session. Correct, Advika. Good. Any any other doubt? Uh, Arjun, is it fine? Okay. So, if you want, I can take one more problem so that everybody uh, who had joined in late, you are all benefited. We'll take one more problem. Just a second. Which one should we take? Which one should we take? Let me take the one where we have... Okay, let's take... Let's take the last one. Huh? Could you do the 10th one? 10th one, sure. Okay. Let's take the last one. Yeah. Okay, so let's take this as our next question. Solve this inequality by using wavy curve. Okay. Now, this is also a rational function, guys. And girls, you must be thinking that, oh, this is a polynomial. Yes, polynomial, in fact, is a rational function. Okay. Now, before we start making our number line, it is advisable that you start factorizing it completely. So I think some of the terms, in fact, most of the terms are quadratic expression in themselves. So let us try to factorize each one of them. So x square minus 16 is what? x minus 4, x plus 4. x square plus 5, x plus 4 can be factorized as x plus 1 x plus 4 again. Now remember x plus 4 is already there. So you put a square over here. Got it? I hope uh, the factorization you are able to understand. x square minus 9, I can factorize it as x minus 3, x plus 3. Right? And x square minus 7, x plus 12 is x minus 3. So let me write it on top. This guy is x minus 3, x minus 4. Am I right? So x minus 4 is already there x minus 3 is also there. So you can write the powers on them as one more. Is that okay? Any question? So indirectly, we are trying to solve this inequality. Is everybody fine with the question? Okay. So now let us begin the process. So first step is make a number line. So let me make a number line. Okay. On the number line, I will now show the zeros of each one of these factors. So for this, it is plus four. So plus four, let me write it on the rightmost. This fellow, it will be minus four. Let me write it here. For this, it is minus one. Minus one, maybe I can write it over here. Then for this, it will be three. Three, let me write it over here. And for this, it will be minus three. Minus three, let me write it over here. Is it fine? So all the zeros of the factors which are seen in this inequality on the left hand side. Achha, even before that, I told you this in the class that please ensure you have a zero on the right side to begin with. If the zero is not there on the right hand side, then you cannot start with your wavy curve. You have to do something with that zero, uh, with that non-zero number and try to bring a zero at, at that position, right? So wavy curve sign scheme, please do some checks and balances before you start. Number one, you should have a rational function and a zero on either side of the inequality. Then only you can use wavy curve, right? So you should have a rational function and you should have a zero. Then only you can begin with the process. Else you cannot use wavy curve for solving any inequality. Is it fine? Okay. 
See, many people ask me this question, sir, what is this wavy curve representing? How do these signs actually are related? See, these signs are basically telling you the position of this function, right? So let's say I take this as a function. Okay. Y equal to this. And this is your X axis actually. So wavy curve tells you how is this function positioned with respect to X axis. If it is above the X axis, you put a positive in that interval. If it is below the X axis, you put a negative in that interval. So at the back end, that means the heart of this uh, concept is basically you are trying to show without actually plotting the graph, how is this function positioned with respect to the X axis? So if the function graph of course, you're not drawing the graph here because drawing the graph is not that easy. It will be time consuming uh, task. So had you drawn the graph, you would realize that the part where you have written positive in the interval in that part, the graph is above the X axis where you have written negative. The graph is below the X axis, right? And in this case, minus four, minus three, minus one, three and four are the positions where it will be cutting the X axis. Okay. But it may not be the case in all the rational functions. So those factors which are in the denominator, listen to my words very, very carefully. For those factors which are in the denominator, the zeros of those factors at those positions, the function is actually becoming, becoming undefined. So those are not the points where the function is cutting the x-axis. However, this information is just optional for you. It has no bearance on solving the question. So just an extra knowledge, which I'm giving you. All right, let's begin the process now. So let us pick up a number greater than four. Okay. So don't take chances. I uh, don't start guessing it to be a positive sign. Of course, it'll come positive in this case also, but take a value, which is greater than four and just see what is the sign of this expression. The one which I'm showing right now, what is the sign of this expression for the value chosen by you. So for example, if I choose a five, this will be positive. This will also 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 be positive. So everything will be positive. So put a positive sign. Okay. Now come to this left interval. So you are crossing four. Four comes from this factor. This has got an even power. So retain the sign. Then you are crossing three. Three comes from this factor. This has again got an even number, again retain the sign. Then minus one, minus one comes from this factor, which has got an odd power. If nothing is there, it is an odd power. So switch the sign. Again, minus three comes from this, which has again got an odd power. Again, basically switch the sign. Clear? Then minus four comes from this factor. This has even power. Even power means retain the sign. Is this fine with everyone? I hope the sign was clear. Any question, any concern, you can no, unmute no yourself always. Yes, somebody was saying something. So, so if it's even power, it's retaining and odd power is changing. That is switching. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay. Now let us try to address the requirement of the question. The question requirement is for what interval is it showing less than or equal to zero? Okay. So let us first address less than one part. So less than means negative. Correct. So it is negative here. Correct. So write down that interval. So that interval will be minus three to minus one. Okay. Hold on. Don't put anything right now without uh, confirming. What should we put next to minus three round bracket or square bracket? Now here less than equal to, and all the terms are in the numerator only. There is no denominator. In fact, denominator is one. If, if you want to uh, say a denominator. So every term, which is basically on the numerator and it is less than equal to has to be included. So this will be included because at minus three, this becomes a zero. So it is fine for me to get a zero because inequality says less than equal to zero. Okay. Similarly, minus one can also be included, but hold on for a second. Aren't there more values for which the function can become a zero? 
like isn't minus four a value, right? Three a value, four a value. So you have to say union of sets which contain minus four, three, and four. Is it fine? So your x must belong to this set for your inequality to be satisfied. <clears throat> Okay. Why did I include minus 4, 3, 4? See, at minus 4, the value of the function becomes a 0, no? So that should ideally come into your answer. But if you just write this, it will not come in your answer. So you have to separately take care of those single, single values for which the function is becoming 0. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So minus four is a value for which the function was becoming zero. So I had to include it in my answer. Three is also a value for which the function was becoming zero. So that also have to include in my answer. Four is also a value for which the function was becoming zero. So that also has to be included in my answer. Clear? Sir, before starting putting the sign on Vivi curve, when we take a bigger value, sir, won't the value become greater than zero because the sign... No, no, don't look at the end result, uh, Advika. End result is something which you will take care of after putting the sign. So what are we doing? We are ignoring this information as of now. And we are just trying to give sign to this number. Later on, we'll say for what interval was it negative, for what interval was it positive, depending upon what question was asked. Okay. So initially, when we put the sign, we don't look at this part. We just look at this part that ha, yaha pe zero hona chahiye. that's it. Okay. Beyond that, so, you don't have to worry so about it. So, when we take a greater number than the in than four, do we have to insert it in ev all of the x's? Or do we just have to insert in the x value? So, the number that you're taking, you put you have to put in the x value everywhere. 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 Yes, that is your x. So, value. so what if it doesn't match? So, sir, what if in one bracket it says positive and one is negative? See, if I take a five or a six or a seven. Any number you take, this will be positive only. You can check if you want to. Right, Taran? Was that your question? It will not be like... Uh, will it no, be sir, positive? No, sir. It, not all will be like in some specific questions. Overall. It won't be Overall. I understood what you're trying to say. You're saying that what if this is positive and this is negative, no? Yeah, yeah. Overall, you have to see the sign of this expression. Oh, so majority. Are not majority. You, you Let's say plus, plus, minus, kya hoga? minus, hi hoga, na? Oh, like that. Yeah, got it, sir. See, product of three numbers where two are positive and one is negative, overall will become negative. So, you have yeah, to see... Yeah. yeah, you have to see that depending upon what signs you are getting, what is the collective sign of the number that you would be getting? Yes, sir. So, but uh, what if there are a lot of factors? Like there are many. Like 30, 40 are there. 30, 40. Do you think such kind of question will be asked to you? What if, if it comes... 30, 40, see, 30, 40, you are smart enough to figure out how many events are there, how many odds are there, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. So every even odd, every negative which is present, even number of times will be one even, one uh, positive number, right? Yeah, correct. Right? You can figure out. I mean, of course, the question setter aim is not to bombard you with a very gigantic expression. Because see, this is not a concept in itself. It is helping you to solve a problem. It is a tool. Are you getting my, my point? So it is going to be one of the assisting tools in solving a different problem, maybe somewhat some problem in calculus or some problem in functions. Okay. So the, the question setter may not ask you a direct question on this idea. Okay. May not ask you. I'm not saying we'll never ask you. Okay. I think Arul also has a question. Can you give an example where the rightmost sign can be a negative? Yes. Why not Arul? Okay. Let me give an example for that. Maybe I can make a function on my own here. Let's say um, I have a function like x minus 1 to the power 3, uh, 4 minus x to the power uh, six, uh, 7 upon, let's say, x plus 2 to the power 2 and x plus 1 to the power 4. Okay. Let us say I want to solve when is this rational function less than or equal to 0. Okay. So just hold on, everyone. I'll be solving this problem on behalf of you all. But if you want to attempt it, you're more than welcome. 
So first we'll make a number line. Then we will put the zeros of these factors on the number line. So as you can see for the first one, for this fellow, the zero is one. Okay, so put a one somewhere. Let's say I put a one here. For this, it will be four. So put a four here. For this, it will be minus two. Put a minus two for one second. Yeah, minus two. And for this, it will be minus one. Clear? Okay, so have you all put the numbers on the number line? Okay, now start with the rightmost interval. Take any value which is lying in this interval. You may take a six maybe. So if you put a six here, uh, this is for Taran as well. If you put a six here, this is six minus five cube. So we don't have to find the value. Just put the sign on top of it. Let's say positive. Okay. This will be four minus six. Four minus six is what? Four minus six is minus two. Minus two to the power odd number will be negative. Okay. This is uh, six plus two to the power two. Again, positive. Six plus one to the power four, positive. Right. Now you have a quantity where on the numerator, there is a positive into negative, which is negative. And down it is positive into positive, positive. So negative by positive is what? Negative. Correct now. So this is how you end up figuring out that the rightmost interval is a negative sign. Clear now? Now clear? Yes. Taran also you are clear how I am figuring yes. out the sign of the entire number? Okay. It is not the majority, my dear. It is collectively kya number ka sign ban ke aata hai. Getting my point? Okay. Now if I am going sir, to... Uh, yes. Sir, uh, what if we have like a x minus 1 the whole cube in numerator and then x minus 1 whole square in denominator sir with the same zero is uh, that uh, repeat repeat once again sir like if we have the like x minus 1 in the numerator uh, x minus 1 whole cube and then in the numerator also you have x minus 1 whole square mm -hmm. so how will you solve that type of inequality where both the zeros are the same zero are the same so is it not equivalent to saying that this is you remove this guy sorry you remove this guy and write a power of 1 down Correct? Yes, sir. Over. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, but in that case, if you realize, if let's say the power on the numerator was higher, then you will have X minus one on the top. Correct. But still one cannot be included in your answer. Despite the inequality being a non hard inequality. See, I'll tell you the reason why. Let us say, I give you X cube by X. Okay. And I ask you this inequality. Okay. Pay attention. Pay attention, everyone. Uh, let me ask this inequality greater than or equal to zero. Now see, you'll say, <coughs> sir, X is there on the numerator also and X is there in the denominator also. Of course, the powers are different. So what you'll do, you'll remove the powers and you make it as X square, right? So, you, you know, make the problem like this. Correct. Now, when you plot the zero of this on the number line, the zero of X square is zero only. Okay. Take any value greater than zero. Let's say I take a one, one square is positive. And since the power here is even, there will be retention of the sign. But here, please pay attention. You would be thinking this is greater than or equal to zero for all real numbers, right? Right? But here, I can't put all real numbers because if I take a zero, the original expression, which was x cubed by x, this will not be defined for zero. Sorry, this is X. Correct? Because your denominator is becoming zero for zero. So zero will not be defined. So you have to remove the zero from your value of X. Got the point? Yes or no? Okay, Arui has a question. What if X square was less than zero? Less than zero means there is no value satisfying. It's a null set. Clear, Arui? So your answer, your set will be a null set. Understood. So very good question that you asked, Mehul. Is this clear what I'm trying to do here? So you have to always look at the original function. Since X is present in the denominator, I cannot include zero in my answer. Okay. Even if after simplification that X is no more to be seen, that is okay. But still we cannot use because there's a difference between X cubed by X and X square x cubed by x, you can't put x as 0. Simple as that. In x square, you can put x as 0. So even though it is simplifying to x square, still 0 is not allowed. Have I made myself clear?
There's a very interesting question on this, which came in one of the competitive exams. I'll show you the question. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay. Let's complete this problem since we have started with it. Right. So four comes from this factor, this factor, and this factor has an odd power. So there will be switching of sign. Then one, one comes from this factor, not this. Okay. This for, this is responsible for minus one. The top one is responsible for one. Okay. This is the one which is responsible for one. Again, this has got an odd power. So switching of sign. Again, minus one comes from this factor, which has got even power. Even power means retention of sign. And then minus two comes from this factor, which is again, even power. So again, retention of sign. Is it clear? Any questions? No, sir. Okay. Excuse okay. me, sir. Uh, let me just complete and then maybe I'll take a few more questions. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's complete this. So the question setter is asking, when is this less than equal to zero? Right. So less than equal to zero means wherever you have written negative sign, you first write down those intervals. So minus infinity to minus two, then minus two to minus one. Correct. Somebody retracted his answer. Then minus one to one. Okay. And then four to infinity. I hope I have covered up all the intervals. Now let us try to see what kind of a brackets will go around them. Acha, quickly write a union bef before I forget the to write the union. Yeah. Now let's start putting brackets. So minus infinity can never be included. Infinity can never be included. So always put round brackets around infinity or minus infinity. Now minus two. Can I include minus two? No, because minus two comes from the factor which is sitting in the denominator. I can't put a minus two in X because then the denominator will become zero thereby making the entire expression undefined. So minus two cannot be included. So since minus two cannot be included here, it cannot be included here also. Okay. So put round round there. Then minus one again also cannot be included. So put a round here, round here. One can be included because one is coming from this factor. Right. And when I put X as one, it makes everything zero and zero is perfectly acceptable by the inequality. Right. So inequality says it can be zero also. So one will be square bracket. Four also will be square bracket. Okay. Now one quick check you have to make. Are you covering all the numbers or all the zeros of the factors on the numerator? That means is one and four included in my answer because zero is allowed. Yes, one and four are already included in my answer. So this becomes your interval of X. So X belongs to this interval. Varun has a question. Sir, for the wavy curve sign scheme, is it okay if we start assigning the signs on the interval to the left of the number line? See, uh, you can do it. Not an issue. Okay, you can start doing it. Any questions? All right. So with this, we are going to proceed with our next concept. So what is the next concept? We are now going to talk about domain and range. Let me write in yellow. Domain and range of this type of function. So, what is the type here? The type is one upon quadratic. Acha, I, I promise you to give a question which came in one of the competitive exams. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Before starting with this, I'll let me go back to the previous slide. Okay. A very simple question, but many people get this wrong. The question is, the question is, if a function is x minus 4 by 4 minus x, okay, find its domain. So find the domain of the function and find the range of the function. Give a response on the chat box and give it at one go. Okay. Don't give domain and then put an enter and then range, then put an enter. Give it in one shot.
in one shot varun because before you type range somebody else would have typed something i mean so no sir i meant to go to the next time but uh, it just uh... okay okay Domain is four. Hmm. Domain is. Don't speak out the answer first of all. Write down the answer in the chat. Okay. Very good, Har Mehar. Very good. Nice. Okay, Nandan. I'm not saying right or wrong to your answer. Let's let's see. Okay, Arjun. Arjun, always remember domain and range are sets. Domain is not a number or set of num. There is not. They are not you no know, numbers written like series. You have to always treat them as a set. Yes, domain range. They are sets at the end of the day. Okay, guys. So first of all, the confusion and the mistake which people do is. They'll say, "Oh, the x minus four is negative of four minus x, so the function is minus one, right? So is this a constant function? And if this is a constant function, my domain should be all real numbers. Do you think this is correct? Tan, tan. No, this is not correct. Now, what is the mistake? The mistake is you when you were you are simplifying it, it's fine. But when you are simplifying it, simplify it." Under the assumption that x cannot be four, then only it is minus one. Because if x is four, you can't cancel zero by zero and say it is one. No, this is not allowed in mathematics. Correct. So this is a mistake which people make. They think that if you cancel it off, it becomes a minus one. Minus one is a constant function. Constant function domain is all real numbers. No, my dear, this is not going to work. This is going to give you wrong results. Okay, so most of you have done this correctly. So it is all real numbers, but for four, you can't put a four. Clear? Because four is going to make the denominator become zero. That is not allowed. Correct? See, same idea which we had discussed in the beginning. Any p x by q x rational function, you have to write down r minus those values of x for which the denominator is becoming zero. So Ideally, by that formula, the answer is this, correct? But yes, if r is not, uh, if your domain is not four, let's say it's any real number, then of course it stands cancelled and gives you one uh, minus one only. So your range is a singleton set minus one. Okay, what do you arrange? Range is a singleton set which only contains minus one. Is it clear? See, many of you have got this wrong. So the range I didn't understand. See, if x is not equal to four because you're not inputting four inside the function, then it can be cancelled, no, and you can get this minus one. So your output is always a minus one. Correct. So your range is only one value, which is minus one always. So if you put a hundred, you'll get a minus one. Sixty, you'll get a minus one. Point three four six five, you'll get a minus one. Right? Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Any question? Yeah, I Mehul. Basically, yeah. you made this. Uh, you put any value of x other other than four, and then you will get minus one. Minus one, yes, correct. Is this okay? All right. So, what we are going to start today? Sir, uh, is... Yes. But for uh, any question, uh, we are not allowed to put in a random value and then check. Sir, will the result always be the same? The range, for or is this just a special case? No, I mean random value and check is just for your you know um, satisfaction. But random value checking will not give you the range. You may miss out some values. How okay, many sorry. how many inputs you will put? All real numbers may infinitely many quantities come. How many values will you put in check? Right. 
So it is just a, I mean, I was just showing it for this question that will always give you a minus one. Okay. Okay, Aditi, no issues. All right. So how do I deal with this kind of question? Maybe uh, to start our discussion today, I'll be taking a simple example to make it clear. Okay. Let's take an example to understand how to deal with domain and range of this kind of a question. To make things very simple for all of you, I'll be taking a function like this. 1 by x square minus 1. Okay. I've purposely kept the quadratic to be simple so that, you know, everybody understands it. So, first step, how do I find the domain? Let me put the heading here. I am now finding the domain of the function. So, remember the domain approach. I write down the formula over here that we had discussed in the class. So, formula for domain was what? Formula for domain was domain of this kind of a function where these two are polynomials. What was the formula we had discussed? The domain formula is r minus x such that q of x is equal to 0. That means you remove those values for which your denominator becomes a 0. Clear? So now tell me in this case, what values of x will make the denominator become 0? So 1 and negative 1. 1 and minus 1. Okay, very good. So here what I'll say, domain is r minus such x is such that x square minus 1 is equal to 0. Correct? So what are the values for which x square minus 1 becomes 0? You rightly said it becomes 0 when x square is equal to 1, which means x is plus minus 1. So you'll say r minus a set containing 1 minus 1. Clear, everyone? Any question with respect so to the... the... So, so we always subtract the real, like the number which makes it makes the denominator zero from the real. It's real. not actually subtracting, my dear. It's an operation on sets. You know, so operation of difference of sets? It's like excluding it out from the real. Ah, you're saying it will be numbers in R excluding these two values. Yeah. Correct? Any doubt related to the domain part? Any question related to the domain, anyone? Okay. Can you move out for finding the range? Okay. Pay attention. As I told you in the class, you have to find the domain before you start finding the range. There is no existence of output without input. I hope you remember this famous statement of mine, which I keep giving in the class. There is no existence of output without knowing the input. So these are your inputs, my dear. Right? And I already know what inputs I am making to the function. Right? Now we are geared up to find the outputs coming because of these inputs. Okay. Now please pay attention. The process remains the same more or less. Of course, here and there, few minor changes will happen. So you have to listen carefully to what I am saying. So first write y equal to this because your output is plotted on the y axis. Hence, we write it as y. This is just for convenience. You can keep using f of x also, but that would be difficult you know, expression to manage. So write a y. y is simple, single uh, alphabet. You can easily manage it. Now, what you do is you make x square here the subject of the formula. Ideally, you were making x the subject of the formula. In this case, you can actually make x square the subject of the formula. It will not matter matter to us even if we make x the subject of the formula but x square will do the job for us we don't have to go to x okay so what i'll do now is i'll take the denominator and multiply it to the left side expand it so x square y is equal to one plus y so x square will be what 1 plus y divided by y. Is it clear? Any question? 
Okay. Now, a small question I would like to ask from you. Since your x belongs to all real numbers except 1 and minus 1, who will tell me x square belongs to which set? Or x square belongs to which interval? Write your answer on the... Okay, Arul, are you sure? Anirudh, are you sure? <laughs> Sir, I think so. I think so. Okay, okay, okay. See, guys, um, once again, I have a very basic question to ask you. Those who are saying all real numbers except one, let's say, can I say x square can be minus 100? Think again. Real number square, can it be minus 100? Or for that matter, any negative number. That means your answer is not right. <laughs> no, no. Uh, for negative number. Yeah, don't, don't go to natural numbers now because stay in real numbers. Natural number is a, you know, it's it's a restriction of your answer. If you square a real number, you can get uh, non-natural numbers also. No. Let's say I take x as one by two, right? 1 by 2 is a real number and it is not 1 or minus 1. So, square of it will be 1 by 4. Aditi, you are you are very close to the answer. Right. It will be a number which is between 0 to infinity and not 1. Am I right? No, no, no. Don't go to whole numbers. Again, you are doing the same mistake, Arul. Let's say I take an example of x as 1 by 2, which I already took. Square of it will be 1 by 4. It's not a whole number. Why are you saying all whole numbers? So it will be a quantity which is between 0 to infinity, 0 inclusive, but cannot be 1. Why it cannot be 1? Because to get x square as a 1, your x should be plus or minus 1, which you are not allowing. See, 1 and minus 1 were not allowed in the inputs. And now Smaran saying positive also will not be correct. And positive rational numbers will also not be correct. You are putting a lot of restriction on your answer. It is just a non-negative real number except one over. <laughs> right? Does it make sense? See, is, sure. everybody, is everybody happy with this part? Then only I'll move forward. Sir, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, so I have a doubt. Please ask. What Basically, uh, what is the root of a negative number? Non-real quantity. It's a non-real number. We are not going to talk about that. Non-real quantity will come out when you take a root of a negative number. Does it answer that question of yours? Uh, Mehul, any, any yes, other question? Understood. Understood now? Yeah. Uh, are you all convinced with this? First of all, say yes. Then only I'll move forward. So, but why can't x square be negative? Square of any real number cannot be negative. So, but we are taking x square as a whole, no? So, if it's minus 1, then uh, y is okay. equal to you, you take any minus 2. Okay. Uh, Aniruddha, you take any real number for me, except 1 and minus 1. Any real number. Which you two. think whose square will give you negative? Ten. Let's say minus ten. 10. Minus ten square will be about hundred. No, this is greater than zero. Even if you take zero, zero square will be equal to zero, right? So it can't be negative. It can be zero at the least. Got this point? Okay. Square okay. of any real quantity will always be non-negative. Some people wrongly use positive, right? Sure, 
it's non negative you should say that means zero is also allowed okay sir, so what is the difference between this answer in the range and the domain sir i have not found out the answer yet okay range i am still finding out did i say this is the answer for the range i'm just in one of my intermediate steps okay so have patience i'll i'll complete this question okay now see now why am i so interested in x square all of a sudden because you can see this expression is where you have equated this y terms to x square see this part that means this fellow that we are talking about this fellow is actually what this fellow is 1 plus y by y so from here i will end up getting some idea in which my in which interval my y lies okay so this will help me this step will help me to get my interval of y okay see how pay attention okay just paying attention everything will be resolved now this says that this has to be greater than equal to 0 but not 1 now remember in the class i told you in one of the types that let's try to put this as 1 and see what values of y make it 1 we will remove those values right you remember that approach everyone so let's say i am trying to see what values of y will make 1 plus y divided by y equal to 1 so that i can remove those values of y from my range but you will get a surprise when you do that so let's say this is my rough work column if i if i start putting 1 plus y by y equal to 1 you'll end up getting c you'll end up getting a shock the shock is 1 is equal to 0 which you know is not possible that means this guy is anyways cannot be 1 so let's not worry about it being 1 let's only worry about it being in this interval that means 1 plus y by y should be greater than equal to 0 yes or no so 0 to infinity means greater than equal to 0 ultimately correct what has this brought you to this has brought you to your inequality that is why inequality concept was taught to you a little while ago so this brings me to again my wavy curve sign scheme that is going to help me to get the answer so what i'll do now i will make a wavy curve sign scheme for this expression so all of you focus on this expression tell me what are the zeros of these factors so what is the zero of this guy minus 1 what is the zero of this fellow zero correct yes or no same thing i mean earlier we used to deal with in terms which were in x now we are dealing with the term which is in y but idea doesn't change just changing the name of the variable doesn't change the concept behind it okay right so tell me what sign should i put on the rightmost interval what sign should come here who will tell me write down on the chat box plus or minus plus very good what sign plus. should come what sign should come in the left to it minus yes again rightmost sorry leftmost plus because they are all having odd powers odd powers means constant switching will happen clear any question any question anybody okay now what is the questions that are asking us uh, this is with special attention to advika so advika we put the sign without looking at this okay we are, we are not considering this for the time being we just put sign depending upon the function now we are looking at it now we are looking at it yes so now we try to figure out where is it greater than or equal to 0 so greater than 0 is minus infinity to minus 1 don't put any brackets okay put a union okay now put the brackets so minus infinity will never be included infinity will also never be included what about minus 1 yes minus 1 can be included because it will make the expression zero and zero is allowed as per the inequality zero cannot be included because zero will make the denominator zero correct so this is your interval of y and now my dear friend mehul we are there with the answer range is minus infinity to minus 1 union open interval zero to infinity this is your answer to the question clear everyone so the approach is 
slightly different from whatever we had done in our previous types, right? So this is how range becomes uh, slightly unpredictable. It is not predictable like how you have for the domain. Domain, there is a ready-made fixed formula to take care of, but range becomes slightly predictable and you have to keep such things in your mind while solving the question. Can you zoom out so that I can? Oh, uh, my dear, I cannot zoom out in this. I can just drag the screen left and right. Just tell me where to go. Is this possible? Right, I'm, just, I'm just looking through it now. I know I'll write it. Myself. Just want a, a domain part. Okay, you want me to start with domain. Yes, yes, Harsha, I'll give you an, another example. Don't worry. I'll not be happy till you give me an answer because this problem I have solved it. No, only you should solve a problem and give me the answer. See, and uh, one more thing. Uh, normally, when I take online sessions, I share the PDF of the class. This entire uh, notes will go to you in the group. So if you have missed out on anything, don't panic. Don't oh, ask me to go to the particular sheet and left right you can easily open the uh, pdf after the class and copy complete your notes wherever you have missed out okay so then we can why not them. why not let us say if i put a zero as x value won't my answer be a minus one nickel so what is that logic that since we cannot put minus one i cannot get a minus one oh right that's not there's no such logic like that because function processes that it processes as per the functionality definition and gives you an output, right? Yes. So you, you can get any answer, which is in the range. Yeah. So why do you subtract the zero by, from the real numbers? In the domain? Where, 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 where? In the domain, in the domain. No, I didn't subtract zero. Why will I subtract a zero? No, like why because do you exclude it out from the real numbers? Which one? So in the domain, why do you uh, exclude the zero, uh, like one comma minus one from the real number? Set. Because at one, this will become zero, no? At minus one also, this will become zero. Oh, so we shouldn't make it zero. Oh, correct. Huh. It should not be zero, no? So just number ke current zero aara hai, usko hata do, katam, isn't it? So whatever is making that fellow zero, you have to exclude it from your input. That means your input basket cannot contain those numbers. Plain and simple. Can you show the inequality? Yeah, yeah, sure, Mia. Don't worry. Just tell me where to drag. So I'll drag the screen. Oh, uh, will you give another example now? Sir? Yes, yes, please. I'll do that. So can you explain how you did that X square thingy for the this part where you put that smiley face below that area? This one. So yeah, see, yeah. Uh, Laksh. Since x square is equal to this, saying x square and saying 1 plus y by y is the same meaning, no? So if this belongs to this interval, even this guy will also belong to the same interval, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah, how, okay. like how we were doing it just... finding the range in the previous functions. Uh, didn't we make x the subject of the formula and whatever was equated to x, then we put that in place of x and solve for y. The same approach. Here is the slight extra thing which I'm doing is I'm not dealing with X per se. I'm dealing with X square here. Yes, sir. Yes. So those who are copying it, I hope you are done with the copying part. Shall we take uh, another problem? <clears throat> uh, may I move to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, don't worry. Asmaran, I, I could have given you, but uh, in that case, the, the concept will become slightly more complicated. Okay. So let me first cover up things which are easy. Okay. Definitely we'll come to those kind of problems also. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's take another question. Let's say I have a function uh, 4 upon 9 minus x square. 
for this function, find the domain of the function. Find the range of the function. And give your response together for domain and range on the chat box. Very good, Mia. Smaran, you're, you're writing the answer in an incorrect way. So you're basically writing the answer, which is actually not the answer. Rest everything is the answer. <laughs> See, be careful because it will become a habit for you to write it like that. Okay, okay. I understood. See, that, that's what I said. I know you know the answer, but if you write it like this, it will become a habit and then you'll purposely make a mistake. Domain, I don't think so. Anybody has an issue because I can see all the right answers coming for the domain. Nice. Arya, I didn't get that. What is that? 9,4? Harmeher, check your answer once again. Okay, Varun, Aditi. Range will take a little bit of time, uh, but domain is straightforward. Not even five seconds you will take to answer domain. Okay, Sam. So I think Varun has only answered with the range part. I guess uh, the rest of you are still doing it. Let me give you uh, two minutes for it. Do it carefully because this is going to be tested in your school as well. Okay, Harsha. Domain is root five. What Laksh? Why? Okay, Mia, we'll check. We'll check. I myself don't remember the answer for these. So we'll check it out. So keep your answer ready with you. Then I'll go back and check who all have answered correctly. Sharon, give me the answer. Okay. Shall we? Shall we discuss? Everybody's ready? Anybody who thinks that I want 30 seconds more, 20 seconds more, 10 seconds more, I can oblige. No, just Sir, 12 seconds. 12 seconds. 12 seconds. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Yes, sir. You can. Shall we? Okay, thanks.
Okay, Arul, we'll check your answers. The first one is domain. So let's talk about domain. Domain is plain and simple. For domain, we already know that there's a well-defined formula. All real numbers except those values of x which make the denominator become zero, right? So let's go to our rough work side and let's say I take the rough work here. Okay. Where do you think 9 minus x square becomes a 0? That means when do you think x square becomes a 9? When x is plus minus 3. Correct. So your answer would be all real numbers except plus and minus 3 sets. So this is a pair set. Pair set means a set containing only two elements. Okay. Don't put a round bracket and a square bracket here. It's a set. Set means curly braces should be there. So check your answer, everyone. I'm sure everyone has got this response. Herr Mayor, understood where you went wrong? Okay. Next. For finding out the range, we'll take a similar approach what we did for the previous question. Let's first write y equal to 4 by 9 minus x square. Let's make x square the subject of the formula. So we'll have 9y minus x square y equal to 4. Advika, what was your answer? I didn't see your response. Not range. Okay. Domain, did you get it correctly? Okay, Sam. We'll check. All right. This is what you are getting for x square. Right? Now, same question to you all. Same question. Since x lies in this interval, which interval will x square lie? Right, 0 to infinity excluding 9. Am I right? Anybody has still any doubt related to this transition? Since x lies in all real numbers except 3 and minus 3, the square of it can take all non-negative numbers except 9. Clear? Okay. Now, since x square is this expression, which I'm showing with a circle on your screen, that means I'm trying to say 9y minus 4 by y belongs to this interval. Okay. Now, again, let's go to our rough work section and try to check when does 9y minus 4 divided by 9 actually become a 9? Let me write my 4 properly. It is appearing like a 9, no? Let me write a 4. Hmm. So let me go to my rough work column and I'll, I'll try to check when does 9y minus 4 by y actually become a 9 and you will realize that it actually never does because if it does, then minus 4 become equal to 0, which you know is not possible. Okay? So this is the equation way of communicating to you. Equation aap se baat karta hai. Right? So the equation is communicating to you that see boss, your 9y minus 4 by y can never become a 9. If you try to do it, you will get a shock. Okay. Yes, sir. Somebody said a sir in between. Uh, yes, sir. In exam, do we have to show and prove that uh, it can never be 9? Not really, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is for your own satisfaction. Okay. Sometimes, yes, you may realize that there are some values coming up, but maybe not in this case. So better not to take a chance, Anirudh, right? It hardly takes a fraction of a second to verify that, okay? Rather taking a chance. Now see, that means I only, only have to ensure that this is between 0 to infinity, including 0. That means this should be greater than or equal to 0. In short, I am now solving a wavy curve sign scheme question. Sir, it's 9y minus 4 by 9. Y, right? Sorry. Sir, by y, right? Sorry, 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 sorry. Slip of pen. Okay. Is it okay? Any questions? I'm happy 31 eyes are watching whatever I'm doing. So you... From minus 3, how does that become 9? 
Is it just the x square value? Sorry? The value of x square, uh, uh, in that only you're putting like minus 9. Uh, uh, you, I miss to x square, you uh, put 3 and minus 3 to x square, the value will become 9. So you're cancelling that out. Huh, that's what. If you square this up, this will become 9. No. And I don't want this to be in your x square values. That means I don't want 9 to be taking, uh, being taken up by this fellow. Okay. Okay. So ultimately, if 9 is not taken, then I'm, I don't have to worry about it. I just have to worry about this fellow being in this interval. Okay. So if I solve my wavy curve, the approach is very simple. Make a number line. Make the zeros of this factor. The zero of this will be zero. The zero of the numerator will be four by nine. Please put the sign. Take any number greater than four by nine. <laughs> twelve. Okay. So nine into twelve minus four divided by twelve is positive. So put a positive. And since every every factor has an odd power, keep alternating the sign without any second thought. You can save your time. Okay. Now the question setter is asking you, where is it greater than or equal to zero? That means wherever you have written a positive, please state that interval. Let me write it below here. So it is going to be minus infinity to zero and four by nine to infinity. Infinities and minus infinities will always be round bases. And zero can never be included here because zero will make denominator become zero, which is never going to be entertained. 4 by 9 I can put because 4 by 9 makes everything become 0 and 0 is acceptable. Acceptable because it is greater than equal to 0. See here. Hence 4 by 9 will be included. So put a union here. So this greater than equal to 0, it was not given in the question. It wasn't given. Given in the question? Yeah, like that greater than equal to. The question just said find the range. This is something which I am inferring in between. So, where Sir, is the so you get, uh, how, how can you say it can be less than zero also, right? Oh, four and Mehul, Dekho. So, why did you put a uh, closed interval in zero? Hold on a second. I am explaining now. Are you convinced with this step to this step? If not, then tell me. So, could you explain that, that step again? See, if any real number is squared and that real number is not three or minus three. Can I say the answer will always be a quantity greater than or equal to zero and not nine? Okay. Yes. Is this creating any issue in understanding? I no, understood. Clear, no? Any question? Okay. Now, since this is greater than or equal to zero, uh, Mehul, greater than or equal to zero will come, no? Yeah. Correct. Now, why didn't I worry about nine being excluded? Because greater than or equal to zero will also contain nine. Hey, na? Why didn't I worry about nine being excluded? Because I already checked that it cannot take nine. Understood what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That but is, is it possible I... sometimes that it can be equal? It is possible. It is possible. We'll see in future if some problem comes like that. After that, is it uh, you know clear to everyone? Is it clear to everyone? So this is the interval of y. So your range is going to be minus infinity to zero union four to nine. So those who had questions uh, right now, uh, is it all answered? Have I missed out answering anybody's question? No, sir. Sir, I had asked you one question. Yes, sir. Tell me. Sir, a quadratic in quadratic functions, when you do the wavy curve, will all of them uh, in all of them will you get a greater than or equal to zero? Or can you get even a less than or equal to zero? Okay. See, there it depends upon question. Like later on, we'll do something related to irrational functions. There we have to, you know, consider few things where you may get greater than zero also. So I will not be generalizing things like that, but yes, to answer your question, there may be problems which will be taking up where only greater than zero will be required. Okay. I I'll take up those questions, not to worry about it. Yes, sir. Sir, could you give an example where there's a value for Y? 
Value for Y as in Nikhil, I didn't get your question. These are all values of Y only. No, no, no. I meant like uh, when we're equating it, right? Like the, let's say we got we got the, the X squared in terms of Y and we're equating that to the value of uh, X, which uh, gets the entire function is, uh, we get the den 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 denominator of the function is zero. So could you give an example where uh, you get a value of Y rather than getting a not possible case? Oh, you're saying if I equate it to this number, I should get a value of Y rather than impossible. Case. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, maybe I'll have to think of that separately. It's not coming at the top of my mind. Maybe while solving few questions, who knows, I may get a scenario like that. Okay. Let's, let's stay tuned. I mean, as of now, till now it has not come, but there may be cases where it may come. So we'll see. We'll see when it happens. Okay. Meanwhile, sir, is it possible? Is it possible they'll give us the range and ask us to find the uh, function? No, no, that is not possible because there can be so many functions having the same range. Okay, let's now take a situation where I have a quadratic where x term is also present. I think some of you were demanding for this question. Let's take this question: one by x square minus three x plus two. So do we would, you like, would you like to attempt this question or do you want me to help you with this? Sir, can we attend it once? Okay. Can we attempt and then? Please, 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 please. Go ahead. Your attempting is more important. So we have to find domain and range, right? Yes, sorry. Let me complete the question. You have to find the domain and range. Yeah. That's correct, Mia. Okay, Harsha, Anirudh, Harmer. All right. What I can sense is many of you are stuck at the domain, not knowing how to proceed further. Am I right? Anybody who is getting. <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. Me. I'll wait. I'll wait. Let's not give up the fight. Come on, everyone. Let's do this. Failing is not a problem. Giving up is a problem. Okay. So let's not be scared of failing. Let's only be scared of giving up. Let's not give up. Okay. Aditi, Pranav, Smaran, Ayush.
ओके प्रभु ओके लेट्स डिस्कस सो फॉर द डोमेन पार्ट ओके वन सेकेंड आई कैन वेट फॉर वन सेकेंड Let me at least write domain. Ah, hmm. uh, no, no, I don't think so. There is such such a pattern there. Samrit, I don't think so. There is a pattern existing. So before concluding on a pattern, we should at least try it out for five six problems to see. I don't think so. There is a pattern like that. All right, we'll check. We'll check. Okay, Mia. Mia has finally given one answer. See, domain. The concept is same. The domain is going to be all real numbers, except such x is which makes the denominator become zero. Now again, let's go to the rough work area. Rough work area. So, what makes this fellow zero? Okay, so this is easily factorizable. I hope all of you. Know how to factorize quadratic, so x becomes one or two. So here the answer would be all real numbers except one comma two. This is your answer for this question. No issues. Let me box it. Okay, me. I will check. We'll check. We'll check the answer. Next range. range is a different ball game so you have to be careful while as you know finding the range let's start with the same process the process is we start calling it as y okay now we'll try to make x the subject of the formula now here making x the subject of the formula is is not as easy as what we had in our previous types okay so for that you have to pay attention take the denominator to the other side okay take the one also to this side let me write it like this minus 3y x 2y minus 1 okay now why have i written it like this is because i want you to realize that i have actually written a quadratic expression in x what is this read this as if it is a quadratic in x okay so we all know how to solve quadratic equations by using the quadratic equation formula so here this is your a this gentleman is your a this is your b this is your c so it's like ax square plus bx plus c what is the quadratic equation formula what is the quadratic equation formula Minus b plus minus under root b square minus four ac by two a, right? So let's do that. X is equal to. Let me write. Minus b will be three y plus minus under root of b square, which is minus three y square, which is nine y square minus four ac. Am I right? Whole divided by two a. Any question? Any concerns in this? Anybody has? Up till now. Up till now. Any concern? Anybody has? Please, please, please highlight. no questions okay now pay attention everyone now pay attention since x belongs to all real numbers except which two values 1 and 2 am i right x cannot be 1 and 2 right what does it mean it means this fellow should be real and should not be 1 or should not be 2 okay by the way 
I'll just try to simplify this little bit more so that you know you can easily work with this. So if you see the expansion of this here will give you uh, nine y square minus eight y square, which is y square. Okay, plus four y. Am I correct? If I just expand it, won't I get y square plus four y? Okay. So this should be real number except one into, am I right? Correct. Now, what are the things which we need to take care for this to be a real number except one and two? What is the number one thing you have to take care of? Who will tell me? That shouldn't be equal to one and two. Okay. First thing is this fellow should not be equal to one and two. So that expression under the root shouldn't be negative. This should not be one. This should not be two. Okay. Let's, let's take that into our account. Okay. Second thing. Yes. Somebody was saying the expression within the under root should not be negative means this should be greater than or equal to zero. Why is this restriction placed? Because if this restriction is not placed, what will happen under root of a negative quantity will yield non real results. But you want your answer to be some real number, isn't it? And one more thing we are missing. Who will tell me that? Uh, y can't be zero. All right. Y can't be zero. Sorry for writing down because I have almost reached the end of the sheet. Okay. So these three conditions, in fact, I can say these four conditions because in one there are two conditions. We have to simultaneously take care of. Okay. Any question anybody has here? If you have any questions till this point, feel free to highlight. So not equal to two, right? Which one? So the second one on the right, it's not equal to two. Oh, right? not equal to two. Yeah, not equal to two. Is it fine? Any question, anyone? Okay, pay attention now. Let's try to figure out whether these guys can be one or not, or can be two or not. So let's start. Let's go to our rough work area once again. So what if you put this expression to be equal to one? It means you're trying to say three Y plus minus under root Y square plus four Y is equal to two Y. That means you're trying to say plus minus under root Y square plus four Y is equal to minus Y. If you square it, you will again get something like this four Y equal to zero. That means Y should be equal to zero, but you know, this is not allowed by my third expression. The third expression, the third restriction, which you are putting here, see here. The last restriction, y should not be zero, correct? So if you want to make this zero, y should be zero, which is not allowed. This is not possible, not allowed, correct? So this anyways can't become one. This anyways can't become one. And same will happen, a similar thing will happen if you try to make this as a two as well. Let's do that quickly also. Meanwhile, can I just write less? And just write it as 3y plus minus this is equal to 4y. That means again, this is going to be a y. I'm just saving my space here. Square it, that again will become 4y is equal to 0, which is not possible again. This is also not possible. So let's not worry about the first restriction because this expression can anyway not become a 1 and 2. So this restriction is actually no restriction for us. Okay, let's now try to go to the second restriction. Second restriction is actually a wavy curve. So here, if I say I factorize it like this, I can solve it by wavy curve sign scheme. So for wavy curve sign scheme, I need a number line. I need to show the zeros of these factors. Is it fine? Zero of these factors are zero and minus four respectively. I hope that is clear. Okay. What sign should I put in the rightmost interval? Write it on the chat box. Quick, 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 quick. 
positive yes yes correct adhika then negative then positive right now you are trying to find out where is this greater than equal to 0 that means wherever you have written a positive sign which is minus infinity to minus 4 remember minus 4 can be included union 0 to infinity and 0 also can be included okay but the third condition says 0 can't be included right so what i have to do is i have to keep all these three restrictions in my mind it means i have to take an overlapping scenario of all the three conditions so first one says i have no issues with any value of y any value of y you put i am fine with the first restriction Second restriction says I want, want value of y only in this value, minus infinity to minus 4, inclusive of minus 4, union 0 to infinity, inclusive of 0. But the third condition says I don't want it to become 0. Okay. So tell me which will be the overlapping condition here. Uh, shall I erase this part because this part is eating up my space? Yeah. So what is the overlap of the first? and the second and the third scenario. Won't you say that the overlap is going to be y belonging to minus infinity to minus 4 union open interval 0 to infinity? This becomes, my dear, the range of the function. Can I see who all got this right? Because you really need a round of applause because if you have solved this problem now, means you, are, you have done a great job. Wow, Mia, do you, I mean, your answer seems to be very, very close to it, but is, is it the zero included for you? If yes, then you are absolutely right. Rest, I am not able to see anybody close to the answer. So this really needs an applause. Good, Mia. Nice. <laughs> so if you don't mind, could you show us one more sum like this? Ooh. Okay, I'll send it for assignment, okay? So Please try, try more of that time. Because see, again, I have to make a progress. You have a test also coming up on 18th of June. So do you always need to check the first restriction? Yes, so is this zero ah. included or not? Oh, uh, sorry? So is this zero included or not in the range? No. See the final answer. This is the final answer. The one which I have boxed. Zero is not included. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Mia, to answer your question, do we always have to check the restriction? Um, see, uh, if you don't, if you want, don't want to take chances, you should check, right? Because maybe in future you may face some, some issues because see, I have not solved infinitely many problems to tell you that a problem will arise. Okay. But from my logic, I would always check. Yes, you may say, sir, so far it has not happened. So in future also it may not happen. But that's just a conjecture. Sir? Yes, sir. So I have a doubt. Yes, 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 please ask. Could you go back to that, please, sir? Okay, one second. Yeah. Right. So uh, over here it says, uh, the answer says uh, negative infinity, comma, minus 4, even in 0, comma, infinity. But then uh, we know it can't be negative. So it can't be 1 or 2. So like... Doesn't no, that no, come Domain up, can't right? be 1 and 2. Range can be. Who is stopping range from becoming 1 and 2? Oh, okay. So then what do you call that 3y plus or minus? What do you call that? What's the name for that? This? Yeah, yeah. This is your x value. From oh. this x value, you're trying to get the y values. Oh, like that. Domain though. is helping you to get the range. Hence, domain is always needed. Okay. Yes. Got the point. Okay, dear all, so I'm very happy that some of you are getting these difficult problems also right at this age. But by the way, for school exams, they will not ask you range for these kind of functions because they take a lot of time. Okay, so in school, uh, I can assure you that mostly the questions will be around domain finding only, which you know you are good at. Okay, all right, shall we move on to the next type? The next type that I'm going to address very quickly is where you have a linear by quadratic. Just blocking my screen once again. Mm. Yeah. 
linear upon quadratic. So let me take a quadratic as px square plus qx plus r. Okay. Now again, I'll just take a problem to explain this idea. Okay. And the process is very similar to whatever we have done so far. Okay. Nothing very difficult, nothing very out of the box we are going to do here. Okay. Let's take an example question. Let's take this as an example. Okay. So this is a linear term, a very simple linear term I have taken because this is just an example to understand the idea and a very simple quadratic also I have taken. Okay. Now let us find the domain and the range of this function. Okay. So first find the domain and range. Would you like to try because the idea is more or less the same? Would you like to try or do you want me to do it? You tell me. We will try. Okay. Good. That's the spirit. <laughs> Lux, see carefully, my dear. Very good, Samyukta. That's right. No, no. Domain is a common value, my dear. You don't find domain and range separately. Domain is for the complete function. What you can put inside the complete function. Because what x you are going to put up, you are going to same put the same x down also. No, These two x's are not different x's. Oh, Akshita has responded. Akshita, where were you? Sir, I have been responding. <laughs> Just joking. Okay. All right. I can see a lot of answers coming for the domain. Let me wait for the range. Good, 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 Varun. Good, Nikhil. Uh, Arjun, please check your answer once. Don't quite, I didn't quite get that why you are removing that interval. And why are you putting curly braces there, my dear? See, if you put curly braces around infinity, means you are you know where is infinity. <laughs> Nobody knows where is infinity. Okay, Pramod. Uh, see, whatever you feel that you are not going to put inside the domain, try putting that value once. For example, somebody has said all real numbers except 0. Why? Can't I put 0 in place of x? I'm getting 0 for that. So output is 0 is fine. 0 is a real number. What is, what is the issue with that? I can't put such a number for which the function becomes undefined. Right? So 0 is not a threat to the function. Zero, the function can easily eat or feed on.
18th June paper is very easy. Uh, I don't want to impose my expectation, but I'm expecting most of you to get above 80, 85 out of 100 in maths. Okay, it's a set relation mostly, a bit of functions. So, very easy paper. Again, Arjun, you are not very sure about the bracket. See, you try to you are trying to say everything between zero to infinity, correct? Zero inclusive or exclusive? So put round or square bracket around zero. Getting my point? It cannot be a half a set. Huh? Put that bracket. All right. Let's discuss the domain, everyone. See, domain will be just domain, uh, Mia, if I may. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, domain will be all real numbers except those values of x for which the denominator becomes zero. But mind you, all my dear students, x square plus one when x is real can never become a zero. That means in reality, the answer for this is a null set. So R minus null set is R only. Yes, there is no real values that you have to remove. Okay. So your answer will be R only. So domain of the function will be all real numbers. Okay. Any question here? Okay, Aruhi. Very good. Mia also. Okay. Included means both are included. Okay. Okay, Mia. Anybody else? So Aruhi and Mia have given me the answer for range as well. Shall I discuss the range or somebody needs more time? So just one more minute, sir. Okay. Arul, there's a small mistake you have done, Arul. But that mistake I'm sure many people will make. <laughs> the thing that you are excluding, do you really think it should be excluded? This is to Arul only, yeah? I mean, you're trying to say that your output can never be that number, right? But I can see it can become that number for a particular value of X. Yeah, this, this problem solving has a lot of surprises. Okay, let's discuss it. So range. So first we are ready with the domain. So not an issue. Next range, the approach is going to be the same approach, which we had taken for the previous question, call it as Y, take the denominator to the other side and get a quadratic in X once again. Okay. Get a quadratic in X once again. So what do you have got here? You have again got a quadratic in X, right? Okay, now thanks to the Sridhar Acharya formula. Sorry. X will be minus B. Now remember, B is minus 1 here. So minus B will be plus 1. Plus minus under root of B square minus 4AC. B square minus 4AC by 2A. Okay, anybody having any issue with the quadratic equation formula? No issues? Let me further simplify it. Okay. Now, pay attention, everyone. Okay, Arui. Uh, please carry on. Please carry on. Uh, recording is anyways being done. Okay, Sanjay. Aditi, we'll see. We'll see the answers. Now, see, everybody pay, pay attention. You want this guy to be real. Your X is all real numbers, right? Because we just found out that domain is all real numbers. 
which means that even this fellow, which is actually your X, this should also be real. Correct. So tell me what all things you must keep in your mind if you want to keep it real. What all, you know, uh, restrictions comes into your mind. So first so restriction. can't be equal to zero. Uh -huh. First, first restriction. What, 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 what? Why cannot be equal to zero? Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is something which I am asking everybody to check out. Check is this actually happening? So what is the problem with y not equal to zero? Can't y become zero? Look at this expression. If I put my x as zero, y also becomes zero. So is there any problem with y becoming zero? This is a surprise to many of you, no? So this restriction is actually overruled. Why? Because y can be zero if it wants. For x equal to zero, y is zero. Right? So then, then if y is zero, then as per this, x becomes not different. Wait, but... wait. Now, many of you would be wondering, sir, how did this happen? Because, you know, ideally my expression should be undefined because of that. That is what is the question of one of you. Now, see here, there is a special term which I had used in our limits chapter when I was doing in the bridge course. Some of you may have missed it, but there is something called indeterminacy. Remember indeterminate form, indeterminate form. Indeterminate forms can have a finite value also. That is what limit actually did. Limit helped us to find an answer to an indeterminate form. Actually, if you put y as 0, you'll realize that on the numerator, you will get 1 plus minus under root 1 divided by 0. And if you take a minus sign, it will actually become a 0 by 0 case. That's actually an indeterminate form also. And therefore, in such cases, I always advise the students to do a quick check that what you are saying cannot happen. Just equate it to that given function and see whether are you getting any real x for which it is becoming that value. So in this case, if you are saying that y cannot be zero by looking at this expression, it deserves a check, right? It deserves a check from each one of us. Okay. So when you do here the check, that means if you try putting this as zero, you automatically end up getting x as zero, which is a real number. And you're allowing all real numbers to be put inside the function. No. So I cannot, my dear, exclude zero. Sorry. So this, this check is good for, you know, this is good for checking, but I will not entertain this uh, restriction. What's the point? So Arul, that zero that you excluded and Sanjay, that can actually be included. All right, let's move on. The second restriction that I have to impose is that one minus four y square, this should be greater than equal to zero because I don't want this to be negative because being negative here will lead to non-real results. Correct. Now, this is again a wavy curve. How it is a wavy curve? Very simple. First of all, let me multiply with a minus sign on both sides. So, multiplying with a minus sign, we all know, will flip the inequality. Correct? Everybody knows this. We had discussed it in our offline session. Now, if you factorize this, you get 2y minus 1, 2y plus 1. Make a number line, correct? Put the zeros of these factors. So zero of this will be minus half and half. Put the sign in these intervals. So if I take any number more than half, let's say I take a one. So this entire expression becomes three, which is positive number. Don't have to calculate the value, but it's sufficient to know that it is positive. And since each of these factors have odd powers, you can keep switching the sign. Correct. Now the question setter is asking us when is it less than or equal to zero? So in which interval do you see a negative sign? That interval you write first. And I think half and minus half can also be included because they're asking less than equal to zero. So there you go. Range of the function is close interval minus half to half. Okay. Let me show you the graph also so that you are convinced. Okay. Can we see the graph of this? Greater than equal to zero. 
I'm sorry. Isn't it greater than equal to zero? No, because when I multiplied with a minus sign, I have to flip the inequality, Taran. But so the answer is always the inequality of the discriminant, which we get. Again, let's not generalize like that. Some values here and there can be excluded also. Like last time you saw that y, y was ex, the denominator value was excluded in this. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, avoid making any generalization till you are very sure about it. <laughs> okay, chalo. I would always. Uh, believe that seeing a graph. By the way, this is one of your seniors' question. I'm moving it. So y equal to x divided by one plus x square or x square plus one. Okay. So look at this function. Yeah, this is the graph of the function. However, you don't have to know the graph, how to make the graph. You can see that this function is between half to half. So I'm just plotting y equal to half. See, topmost is half, bottommost. That means it will just graze past the bottommost part. Yeah. See, it is restricted between minus half to half. And this can very well become a zero. See here, it is becoming zero here when it is passing through zero. So it is between minus half to half. This is your range of the function. Domain is you can go anywhere from minus infinity to plus infinity. So can you explain again why it can't be zero? I don't, I don't understand. Why it can't be zero? No, I'm saying it is zero. It can be zero. Ulta, I'm saying it is zero. Why can't be zero is removed. It means why can be zero, I'm saying. Excuse me, sir. Uh, wait one second. The person who asked this question, I think, who oh, asked yes. that? Ayush. I'm saying why can be zero, my dear. I'm not saying why can't be zero. But why why can it be zero? You're saying why can it be zero? Yes. Sir. Okay. If you're asking that to answer that, if I put x value as zero, what will be the y value here? Tell me. Let's say there's an input x. Let me make it like a machine. Yeah. If I put a zero here in the input, what will be the output? zero. So I am getting my Y value as zero when the input is zero. So that is fine. Zero is acceptable as my output. Okay. So. Okay. This is a false positive. I call this as a false positive. What is false positive? This is a commonly heard term in false positive means by mistake. It has come in my answer, but it doesn't hurt us. False negative is a problem. False positive is never a problem. Like I'm mean, giving you a simple example. Let's say, um, no, if I go for a COVID test and uh, the test somehow so shows I'm having COVID, it's a false positive. Even though I don't have COVID, it's showing me I'm, I'm having COVID. So maybe I'll be more, you know, uh, careful. I'll go for another test or maybe I'll consult the doctor that, hey, I really have a COVID. But if somebody says, hey, you don't have a COVID and you, ha you were having a COVID, then that is a more problem because then you'll be careless that, okay, I'm not suffering and you'll keep spreading it and you know, creating a lot of issues. <laughs> Right. Oh my God. Nikhil has a question, uh, sir. But when you plug in a number, let's say five into the function, then we get the output five by 26, which isn't half. So shouldn't the range be only no five by five by 26 is a number between minus half to half. No, this is a range of values. It is saying your answer will be in that interval. Five by 25, 26 is very much between half to half. Yes, sir. I'm not saying it is these two values. You, you people are still not careful with the bracket. See, let me for one final time clarify this. See, if somebody writes X belongs to this, X belongs to this, X belongs to this, and X belongs to this. Let's say I take one of the cases. What is the difference between these three expressions? This means X can only take two values, A or B, nothing else. So those who are using curly braces incorrectly for them, this is an alarm. If you put like this, you know, how will the teacher read this? The teacher will read that X can take A or X can take B, nothing else. What the point? If you write like this, then the teacher will think as if A and B are two real numbers and you are 
राइटिंग ऑल रियल नंबर्स बिटवीन ए एन बी ए एन बी एक्सक्लूडेड करेक्ट इफ यू राइट लाइक दिस देन हाउ विल द टीचर इनफर इट द टीचर विल इनफर इट एज इफ यू आर राइटिंग ऑल नंबर्स बिटवीन ए एन बी ऑल रियल नंबर्स बिटवीन ए एन बी इंक्लूडिंग ए एन बी करेक्ट एंड इफ यू आर राइटिंग इट लाइक दिस how will the teacher infer it the teacher will infer it as a to b everything between a and b oh sorry everything between a and b except a got the point so please kindly know how to read those intervals which we have already done in our set theory chapter so i didn't understand why you multiplied the inequality by i could have done without it also varun uh, not a not a important uh, act here i could have done it without that also tak acha so let's let's do it by varun's way so varun is saying why you have to multiply with a minus 1 couldn't you solve the inequality without that yes i can solve it see varun and this is i think taranjit's question also ki sir why did you multiply with a minus maybe yes tarun okay now see if and if you had not multiplied with minus 1 you can still solve the question how this time again you'll make a number line again minus half and half will be your intervals now take a value which is more than half you realize that this will be negative now correct correct this will be positive this will be negative sign has changed now but it will not change the solution you know why because now this time you are trying to find out when is it greater than equal to 0 that means wherever you have written a positive sign so again it will become minus half to half so answer doesn't change answer remains the same varun yes sir clear any question so, but you can solve without using the you know i mean the number line you know. how so like uh, can you move to the this, uh, the other one minus ah and now you will say i'll do this sir over square right. yeah like this then what will you do after this after minus up ah no 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 please don't do all those things you are not solving an equation my dear all those things are okay if you were solving an equation in equation they needs little bit of more analysis okay please do not try to do all those things this is what i was selling in the class also when people solve inequality they are still in equation solving mode no you are not solving an equation you are solving an inequation so please follow the rules and regulations of inequations equation and inequation there is bit of difference you can't apply equation methodologies for inequations okay so with this i'll stop for today's session thank you for joining in because uh this could have not been possible in a maybe a you know classroom environment so targeted you know doubts coming from each one of you thanks a lot we'll meet again on friday 16th of june in the school premise bye bye take care good night and stay safe thank, thank you sir thank bye you. sir thank you bye thank you sir thank you sir see you sir bye sir thank you sir bye bye thank you sir bye 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 thank you sir thank you, thank you.